Okay, and welcome back. So this is part two of a video I was doing. So I was having a look last time at the merge statement. I was trying to say, if we've got an existing table using Databricks Delta, or using Delta Lake if it is your Synapse Analytics, and I've got some updated data, and I want to merge that data into my Delta table, I was having a look at how we can do that. And we saw two parts, we've got the SQL syntax for doing a merge statement, and we've got the data frame Delta table syntax that we can use in PySpark or Scala. And that worked happily. We saw that Delta Lake, the open source version, doesn't have the full SQL syntax implemented, but you can do it using a data frame, which is better. So fine. Um, but the interesting thing, the, the other thing you can do with Delta is time travel. We can say what happened before and after each given operation. There's a few different ways we can do that. So I've got some more examples. Let's have a look how we can do time travel using Delta in both Databricks and Synapse. Okay, so back, same training um, notebook we were using last time. So we've run all this, we've done all this good stuff, we've got some dummy data, we've seen that before an update, as an example, we had this person on 10,000, and then we didn't have kind of uh, this person, we had a few extra people. We did a merge and then we ran it again. So we've got some extra people, so again, we've got this person, Paul White, is new, they've been added. And that Jules is on 25,000, not on 10,000. So we've got our before and after state. We know if we're querying before this happened, we don't want to see Paul White. We do want to see Jules on 10,000. If it's current state, then we want to see Jules on 25,000, and we want to see Paul White. And the good thing is we've got that history. So despite the fact that we've changed the data, Delta doesn't delete the old records. We've looked previously at this thing called vacuum. That's going up and hoovering got the history and deleting our history. We haven't vacuumed this data yet. We've got the history for however long until we decide to vacuum, normally between seven and 30 days. And within that window, we can time travel. We can say, show me the data as it was at this particular state. Okay, so let's see how we do that. So I showed you this briefly at the end of the last video, got describe history. And that's going to go through, it's going to read the transaction log and say, here's everything that's happened on this table. And importantly, we get these two things. So every change has a version and it has a timestamp. And we can use either to do time traveling. So it's quite useful. We've got version as of and timestamp as of. Where we can say, show me it as of version 10. Or show me it as of and then give it a timestamp and it'll find the nearest one, the one that's active at that time. So they're both super useful to see. So the one that we can see, we can try and go back to this version, which is when I'd reset the data before I did the merge, and we should see that original data. That is the plan. Okay. That's me trying to query the history of the uh, Delta log, because we saw currently in Azure Synapse Analytics, you can't actually get at the history. Uh, you've got that, that lovely command of describe history. It's implemented, it recognizes that command, um, but they haven't baked it into the notebook yet, so we can't actually see the history when we're in Synapse Analytics. Okay, so this is the format that we're looking at. So writing some SQL, I could do timestamp as of and give it a date. And that should work, that should tell us what's going on. So let's grab the timestamp that we want. We can do that timestamp. And then we'll just try it both ways. So we can do it completely without that. So let's just get rid of that entirely. So this is saying, show me what my data currently looks like. And this we're expecting to be current state. Okay, yeah, so we've got jewels on 25,000, and we've got our oh, Paul White should be in there. There we go, so we've got Paul White as a person. So that's what the state currently is. So I can add in that um, timestamp as off, give it that. Again, it needs to be quoted, I believe. Let's just try it. So saying, I want to see this table as a temp temporal query, go and show me what they look like. And yes, yeah, so we've got fewer records, and we can see Jules is back on 10,000. So I'm doing time travel, I'm saying, actually show me a different version of this table. The alternative way, so that's using a timestamp. We've also got this version as of. And that means we need to know the version number. We need to know what this particular table, what the update, update timestamp is. Not timestamp, the version. So we'll have an incrementing number every time someone makes a change to that table. It's going to record it in the transaction log, and we'll know what that version is. So version 10, we expect to be before the merge. So this is expected to be our original data. And again, yeah, 10,000, no pull white, that's our original. And then version 11, 
same as current, should actually be our updated one. Okay, there we go, got more records, and we can see 25,000. So, a lot of stuff going on there, but we can do it, that's happy. Uh, now this, again, I think this is gonna be one of those ones where the SQL site's not implemented, but the data frame one is. So let's try this. We've still got this all turned on. Gonna add some code, gonna put the SQL in, gonna tell it it's in Synapse SQL format. Okay, so first things first, let's just see, can I get this version out? Go off, run it, and see what's happening. Okay, so I can see my data. Again, this is current state, so I know this is the updated version. Now, what we'd love to do is version as of, I'm gonna do version as of zero just to get the original. Now, I don't think that'll work. I don't think it knows what the version is. Yeah, so that's say uh, it doesn't understand that syntax. Unless the syntax has changed, which I'd be surprised. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's not actually uh, enabled. So we can do it instead. Let's do a data frame version. So we can do, um, let's just do a full data frame dot read. So we're going df, uh, doing spark, dot read. No, not data frame reader, just dot read. Yeah, uh, we're doing format of delta. Uh, we'll do a load and I'll grab the location. Uh, and then we've got this options command. That's where we can tell it anything more special we want to do. And we do have version uh, as off as a command. So we should be able to give it a version number in here. So let me just grab the locations. That's where we're going from. And then that should hopefully work quite nicely. Just do that. Okay. So spark our read. That's in there. See if that goes off and runs. So we're bringing a new data frame. We're going back to the uh, dot table. So that seemed to work, didn't give an error. So let's see if we can display our new data frame. I know, terrible practice me calling it DF, but all fine. Okay, so it's going in, trying to read it. Should tell us what that data frame actually looks like. And display's not working again. Okay, so let's change it around. Let's do data frame dot show. Let's see what that looks like. And again, we want this to be the original state of data. Okay, and it is. So Jules Winterfield on 10,000, that is our original state. So we just change this and say, well, version as of one. Again, I can't run the history. I don't know what the actual version numbers are, but I know the first two are zero and one, right? Uh, so I've read on that data frame got shown, and this should hopefully be give us the next version up. So this is after that emerge, and yeah, Okay, so time travel is working and fully implemented in Synapse. If you want to be able to use it, you have to be doing it on the data frame side, but that's fine. So that's version of, as of. Let's do timestamp as of. Let's give it a timestamp. And you know, it's going to be interesting me trying to make up a timestamp. Let's see. Let's just grab one from over here. Now, I know these aren't quite the same timestamps as we've got, but let's just see if the syntax actually works. So give it a timestamp. Okay, so we're going to run that again. Is that going to complain? Is that a valid option? Okay, oh, interesting. Okay, so the provided timestamp is before the earliest version for that table. So I'm actually trying to go back before history began. So let's have a look up here. When did I first create this table? Uh, 12, 43, 37. Let's see when we're asking for. Yeah, okay, so we're asking for way back in history. So let's go 12. Uh, 44, 45. Let's see what that looks like. Is that going to run? That should hopefully. I'm talking about the wrong day. It's after the first commit. It's after the latest commit. Okay, so it wants somewhere in the middle, it wants an exact timestamp of the last commit. Okay, so that's not that flexible. So, what I would like to be able to do is just say, here's a time. I, know, I can pick any time and all I'm saying, well, this is the earliest one we had, or this is the, the nearest snapshot in between when you asked for, or this is the latest time. So it's not that flexible, but it is giving me the latest commit time. So I can say, well, actually just use that timestamp. Going to override that with the actual timestamp it's telling me. And then we should be able to see what's actually going on on that table. Okay, command executed. 
and that should work. So it's a little bit, we might have to do something around querying the table, working out when the latest is, saying find me the nearest commit that was before this timestamp, but it works. So I can go and see, see the current state of my table is that, and that actually works. So yeah, that's a little intro into how time travel works uh, in both Databricks and Azure Synapse. So whether you're using the SQL mode because you're in Databricks and you can say version as of or timestamp as of, or in either mode, you can use it on a data frame. And then you can say version as of or timestamp as of as an option on your data frame. And that is super powerful. Now remember, that is only as long as you've got those histories, only as long as you've actually maintained those redundant records. Because when Delta's going up and saying, I've replaced that record, that's, that's now old, that's an obsolete, that's an old version of my parquet, this is the one you want to read. Um, when we form the vacuum command, it hoovers all those up, it cleans them, deletes them. So if you've just done a vacuum, you can't time travel back to that point again. Um, but if you're doing vacuum every 30 days, or kind of you have a rolling 30 days that you run your vacuum on, then you've at least got this kind of temporal querying for a 30 day window. Um, now it does have redundancy in there. You know, if you've got a giant parquet file and you update one record, it's going to make an entire copy of that whole parquet file with the one updated record. There's a lot of redundancy in these histories. That's why it's not for slowly changing dimensions. It's not for maintaining proper data history for years. I see it as kind of like a transactional backup. I see it as I get a seven day rolling window that if I run a giant update and I get it wrong, I can say, let's roll back. Let's undo that change. Show me what happened before you made that giant update. Then that is fantastic for it. But given the redundancy, given the overhead of keeping all those different change records, definitely wouldn't recommend using it as an actual formal history that you want to keep. It's a physical snapshot of it at different stages. So you can roll back to it within a, game, a small window. But yeah, no, really cool. So if you're looking at signups and you fancy doing time travel, that's how you do it. So you need to have a Delta table. You need to read it in as a Delta table and you perform any updates. And then when you read that table, use timestamp power as of or version as of. And you can do time travel. You can be a time traveler. So yeah, cool, pretty good. And it all works, which is nice. So yeah, have a look. And again, let me know if there's anything that you are looking into that you're trying to figure out how that works in signups. And I'll try and have a bit of a dig. Catch you next time.